well, you know, I don't know. I guess I've bought records. You know, I've had iPods, cassette tapes, CDs. You know, I mean, people like vinyl for whatever reason, the, the records, if you will. I mean, would I go to a record store? It's hard to say. Steve Weiner here from GetRubix.com. And today in our How To In Tune episode series, whatever, we're going to be taking a look at endpoint privilege management. I just stream my music. If you're not familiar with endpoint privilege management, I can show it to you very quickly. The whole idea is a way to give your end users who are standard, you know, standard users, not admins, the ability to elevate something. So traditionally, we would do this by right clicking on an app and clicking run as administrator and we would be blocked due to the UAC, user access control settings. But notice I have another icon here called run with elevated settings. That's deployed from into, that's the endpoint privilege management client. So how does this work? I can click on this and then depending on the policy that's deployed, like right here, it's telling me I'm not allowed to run this app as an administrator. Fair enough, but VLC, I have some policy applied. So now I'm gonna click it and uh, I am prompted and I can enter a business justification. Um, let's say training videos. That might be a good reason to run that as an admin and I'll hit continue. And I am now allowed to run this program as an admin, just being a standard user. So how does this work? How do we, uh, what are our options and, and, and what can we do with the apps uh, to get them in there? So let's start by taking a look at uh, what that is. So I'm going to open up Intune and we're going to take a look at how these policies look. Hit make that a little bigger. I can. So when you get to the main Intune page, you click endpoint security and then endpoint privilege management. This does require an additional license. Um, you need to have the Intune suite. So some money there. Um, but then once that's there, you can start setting up these policies. So. There are two kinds of policies. The first kind you need to set up, which I recommend deploying to everyone. So there's only one option here. That is the elevation settings policy. So elevation settings is the piece that actually deploys the client. So when I showed you before here, when we right click on something and we see this run with elevated access, that's because we've deployed the endpoint privilege client to our devices with this policy. So that means we've hit endpoint elevation settings policy and we can give it a name default elevation policy. So right off the bat, we're going to turn it on or off. Turning it on enables the client. You have the option to send that data for reporting so you can see who's elevated and what that looks like. Um, you can limit your scope to all elevations, uh, diagnostic data and manage elevations only, or just diagnostic data. So that that's up to you. I just leave it on the default and then you can set a default response. Now I would recommend leaving this off. Um, doesn't really make sense to deny all requests because that defeats the purpose. Um, and we might want something different in every app. So for now, we're going to leave that not configured. The main thing here is we're turning the switch on, getting that client over to the machines. And I already have mine, so we're going to back out of that. Then what you can do is you can literally make different policies per application, right? So if we take a look at the VLC one I created, okay? So if we go to the configuration settings, you can have different kinds of rules here, right? So I have a user confirmed rule and let's take a look at some of that. So I've called it elevate VLC. It is a user confirmed. Now the other type of rule is automatic. Automatic means if you are scoped to this um, policy, if you're a user who I'm scoping this to, you can elevate VLC, no questions asked, right? You just you just get that. Um, so if it's user confirmed, you have the option to, you know, have the user get prompted, provide a business justification, which is what we saw, or even enforce Windows authentication. So if this is a more of a sensitive app, you can require them to log in again. Maybe that's low for business. Maybe that's MFA. Either way, that's a good, 
good piece there. Um, you could determine if all the child process processes that run under that app also will be elevated or if you're going to require a separate rule. Um, I've chosen to allow all those child processes and that's just the way it behaves. Getting down to the actual app, we're required to put in the name of the application, uh, the path it lives in, and then a signature source, right? Um, so essentially you have the option of doing one of two things. You can basically create a self-signed publisher certificate and upload that here, or you can provide the file hash. And we're going to look at those two methods and how that works. So we're, we're basically going to go ahead and make one for Visual Studio Code. I had one from earlier, but we're going to apply it anyway. Um, the first thing I would recommend doing before anything else is creating a group for those users. So I want to create a group called uh, Endpoint Privilege Management. So it's EPM uh, Visual Studio Code meaning any users I put in this group will be able to elevate Visual Studio Code. And this, this is a good way for me to manage who can do it and who can't do it, because I don't have to touch the policy, I can just move the users in and out. So I'll say user group, uh, let's do a group for users who are allowed to elevate Visual Studio Code via EPM policy. Um, I don't need roles assigned to it, and it's going to be a manual group for now. Um, and we're going to go ahead and hit uh, create. So I don't have anyone in the group right now, but I could put someone in that later. Uh, so now what I'm going to do is I need to get the information about my app. And there's two ways to do this, like I was, I was saying. So I'm going to come over back to my reference machine. You have to do this. Um, you have to do this on a reference machine. And what you have to do is, in this case, it's gonna be Visual Studio Code is the app I'm interested in. So we need a few things. Let's get a notepad out. You always wanna get a notepad for these things. So the first thing I need is the file path. So I'm gonna right click on Visual Studio Code, open file location. And you can see here we got uh, C, program files, VS code, code.exe. That's perfect. So let me go ahead and shift right click and we're gonna copy as path. Now the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get the file hash. So in order to do this, I'm gonna run PowerShell. Get file hash, full path. And then we're going to pipe, select, object hash there it is so we can copy that or you can do an out file if you want we're just going to copy it and paste it here that's fine um so now what we will do is we have that information so i'm going to flip back over to our lab machine and we're going to go back to endpoint security endpoint privilege management this time we're going to select elevation rules. So now we have a, a specific specific rules for an application. So we're going to say EPM Visual Studio Code. I'm going to click next. And I'm going to leave it user confirmed. And you, you can have multiple policies for one app instance. So I, I might have one that automates one group of users or does a user confirm for another. So you're, you're not really limited to that. Um, so I'm going to leave user confirmed, but I'm going to edit the instance and I'm going to call it elevate visual studio studio code. We're going to leave it user confirmed um, and we're going to require the business justification. I don't necessarily need users to authenticate. Um, it's not really a sensitive application, but for tracking purposes, I wanna see what that justification is. So we'll do that. Um, uh, child process behavior, I'm going to allow those processes to run under elevated. So basically anything within that session. Now we get to the file name. So if you remember what we, what we had before from what we pasted, 
So the actual name, this is where we got split it up a little bit. So the name of the program is code.exe. Okay. Um, but the, the path it's in is going to be everything before that. There we go. Now for a signature source, this time we're going to say not configured. And we are just going to provide our file hash. It acts as a checksum. We hit save, next, next, and we're going to add that group. So I'm going to click EPM Visual Studio Code. It should be a user group, right? Um, and you can see there's no one in there. That's fine. We're going to actually add someone in there. So let me go back to the group. And uh, let's go find that EPM Visual Studio Code members. And we're going to add our our demo user Rick Jones to that. That'll take a minute to populate. There we go. Okay, uh, it'll take uh, some time. Could be a few minutes, could be up to an hour for the policy to push out. But when it does, uh, that will no longer be an issue in terms of it won't give me that error message. So now if I click run with elevated access, here's what we're going to see. Run with elevated access. Yep. Open this app as an administrator and I'm prompted to enter the business justification. So I'm going to say um, access for AI dev project. Sounds fancy. We're not doing any of that though. Terrific. So what's another way we can do this without the file hash if we're looking for an alternate form of, uh, of security? So if you recall, when we were uh, basically messing with that policy, let me go back to it. We are going to hit um, edit. And there is um, an option for signature source. And we can use a certificate. So how do we make a certificate, you know, a self-signed publisher cert from a file? How does that work? So once again, we're going to head back to our reference machine. And we're going to fire up PowerShell. Okay, let's clear the screen there. And we're going to type in, uh, we still need our path. So if you lost it, move this over. If you did lose it, um, we are going to need the file location. Copy the full thing as path. And we're going to do get authentic code signature path. Select object, expand property, signer certificate. And then we're going to pipe that out to export certificate. The type of certificate is going to be a cert. And then the file path that we're going to put that. Um, and let's see, I believe I have a temporary directory for it. I have temp. I'm going to make a folder called certs. Put that right there. That's fine. So we're going to call that C certs and we'll call it uh, visual studio cert.cer. And we have a cert now for visual studio. Okay. So now back in the lab, what I can do is for signature source, instead of not configured. So I'm going to actually remove the file hash because we don't need it. We're going to upload a certificate file. So we can just click here and I'm going to move over to where I put this here. This is going to be VS code cert. This is another version I made before just so I'd have to move it through machines. You see now from the cert, it has the base 64 value. My cert type is going to be a publisher cert type. This is not coming from a CA. This is coming from the publisher of the app itself. And now you see file hash isn't required. So I could save that, push that out as well.
Um, cool. Okay, and now we have a very simple way to give just-in-time access to standard users on Intune managed machines. If there's anything specific you want to see in Intune, how to do something, whether it's related to autopilot, Windows management, um, come tell us at the Discord. I believe it's here. Is it here? Do I have it perfectly now? Come say hi. Talk soon.